I'm an awful host today, guys. This is the second session I'm recording this in, by the way. And then, of course, um, the reasonable next step is to try and checkmate the fucker and be like, hey, when you read it, because I'm done. I'm done. I'm, you know, I'm poopy today. I get it. I'm feeling poopy. I don't want to give you poopy energy or whatever vibe. You guys are Gen Z or whatever, probably watching this chat GPT or any other pretentious intellectual I meet in these type of spaces. They all sound the same in Silicon Valley, really. They all Welcome back. All right, so today we're going to bother chat GTP with some very interesting questions. Well, not really. Uh, I want from a Darwinian perspective, from, you know, an evolutionary perspective, I want chat GTP to explain the reason why certain humans enjoy or perhaps find comfort in hearing the sound of the rain as it hits their umbrellas or, you know, you're, it's a Saturday night. It's dark outside, it's hitting the roof of your car, and lo and behold, you're very relaxed. Why do you find comfort in that? So, ChatGTP is saying it's possible that the sound of rain hitting the umbrella might be perceived as comforting because it is a natural sound that has been present throughout human history. Now, this is relating it to the availability of water. Water as a resource is indeed necessary for survival, right? Uh, in this way, we associate the sound with a resource that provides us with comfort, security, and it's also soothing. So it's saying that apart from that, apart from the food security you get, it's also signaling um, a consistent repetitive sound that can drown out other distractions and promote a sense of calm. But I think we got to get deeper in that. I mean, that's still quite simplistic. All right, so let's dig a little deeper. Um, Natural sounds, evolutionary speaking, are present throughout human history, and these can be comforting as they indicate an environment conducive to maximizing our reproductive potential. So ChatGTP says, okay, that's one way to put it. In the context of evolutionary theory, it is possible that the preference for certain natural sounds, such as rain, might have developed because they were associated with environments that were indeed conducive to survival and reproductive success. Perhaps the sound of rain could have been associated with the availability of water, which, okay, it already said that. It is also possible that it's a way of reducing stress. Of course, it reduces stress because you know that you're sheltered for something that could be energetically draining, right? So therefore, your body's producing less cortisol, almost probably. I mean, you know, from a biological perspective. <clears throat> All right, so let's uh, ask a more specific question. I almost wrote a paragraph here, but okay. Apart from being an indication of potential water resources in our surroundings, which are precious, of course, for ensuring our survival. From the perspective of evolutionary theory, wouldn't the sound of rain hitting our, our sheltered layer, for example, being, you know, an umbrella, uh, indicate that a resource that would otherwise make us damp and wet, uh, you know, and in, for instance, excess water showering us in a cold, open environment, uh, wouldn't that cause uh, energetic waste of our bodily resources? For example, I would say, you know, I'm saying here for heat redistribution purposes and thus eventuality, eventually uh, immunity modulation, right? Because your immunity has to work harder. Your body has to work harder to bring homostasis. You are, you know, when you catch a cold, what's going on? I mean, especially if you're a fragile individual, not a strong young uh, man, but, you know, someone who is out in the cold, perhaps, and uh, their body has to work harder to bring the heat back on, you know, in, in, in simpler terms. Is that being deflected away from us, you know, the, the rain being deflected away and not hurting us in the present moment? Um, it, as it gathers for our future usage, you know, our energy consumption is being preserved, right? Is that the reason where, you know, the potential energy savior that the umbrella is or that the shelter under the cave was for our um, ancestors, right? All right, this is uh, taking too long and I have two jobs, no time, and neither do you. So let's wrap this up. All right, so uh, chat GPT is, you know, we're, we're going back and forth and uh, it's saying, yes, that is another way to think about it. Mm, smart you are, Pato One. Anyways, that was an awful yield interpretation. I'm sorry, guys. I'm tired. I'm just tired. All right. I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> the sound of rain hitting an umbrella 
might be perceived as comforting because it serves as a reminder that we are protected from the elements and can avoid the energetic cost associated with being exposed to the rain. All right, so why didn't you say this from the beginning? I'm asking for a Darwinistic point of view, and it's just, I have to dig so deep. It's like, it's it's just, it's left wing, man. It's not scientific enough. They, they gotta, they gotta be. <sighs> All right, I obviously was on the edge, uh, so I, I re-recorded this part. <laughs> All right, so, <clears throat> I, I man, I'm tired. Being a doctor is a tiring job. I work 12 hours a day, you know, it's, yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, in the context of evolutionary theory, it is possible that behaviors or preferences that help to conserve energy and, well, protect us against environmental hazards, hazards, <laughs> hazards, God, I'm losing my voice, I'm losing my my shine, anyways, doesn't matter, we're all, we're all going to be taken over by the AI, it's just the way it is, this voice will not matter anymore because they're gonna, you know, they're gonna reproduce a better one, a deeper one, a more perfect one, and you will not even know that it's a human or a machine, but it's gonna be a machine. Uh, all right. Anyway, so they're saying these hazards, well, they would have been selected because, you know, they would have increased the chances of survival and, and, da 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 da, reproductive success, because that's what it's all about, folks. Every biological being in this planet, whether you like it or not, be it a microbe, a fungi, whatever, a human, an, an ape, you know, anything, an insect, they're all reproducing, they're all fucking, they're all making different copies of themselves, newer and better. It's just, in that way, we're pretty linear, you know. Every, everything else might not be so linear, but this, you know, it's, it's a constant. And we're gonna have to linearly reproduce until we colonize Mars or where the fuck else we gotta, just gotta do what Elon says, pretty much, because he's right, in a way, the guy's crazy, he's a genius, of course, no doubt, but he's right. If not, in the next 10 years, 20, 100 years, eventually, it's either we die or we colonize or we kill each other. But the way things are going in the world, we might just, you know, start a thermonuclear. So anyways, let's not digress any further, any further. Oh, God, I'm tired. All right. So yeah, reproductive success. Chat GPT saying, yeah, so we seek shelter. From the rain, we stay dry, and sure, uh, we might have a better chance to conserve our energy and the cost associated with trying to, cons you know, to remain hot and uh, whatever. Yeah, cool. I'm an awful host today, guys. This is the second session I'm recording this in, by the way, um, because yeah, you know, I, uh, I think I recorded this like the first half. I sound more professional and happier because that was the beginning when ChatGPT just came out. I mean, it came out in November, but I just found out about it 2023, like most of us. Um, thank God I invested in Microsoft, at least that. You know, that's that's my happy moment right now. And I sold it, of course, because I needed the money, but that's another story. Um, then, of course, um, the reasonable next step is to try and checkmate the fucker and be like, hey, so do you then agree that evolutionary theory is the best way to explain the reason why humans uh, enjoy the sound of rain popping onto their umbrella whilst keeping the humans dry and safe. <laughs> Do you have any counter arguments, right? Because I'm a good intellectual, at least I try to be. Or other better ways to explain this phenomenon. And of course, you can see that um, it's gonna give me some left wing type of answer. It's not, I don't care, I'm neither right nor left wing. I'm apolitical, so I don't give a fuck, but it's. It's like there's other ways and this and that. Just okay. What is culture then? If it's, if culture is one way to explain it, then explain culture to me. All right. So, guys, just you know, pause the video. Pause the video when you read it, cause I'm done. I'm done. I'm, you know, I'm poopy today. I get it. I'm feeling poopy. I don't want to give you poopy energy or whatever vibe or. Because I'm a millennial, so, you know, you guys are Gen Z or whatever, probably watching this. I don't even know your lingo. I don't even care to know. Because the real world out there, that shit cray. <laughs> probably don't even know what that means. Cray, crazy, Jay-Z, 2012, long time ago. I get it. Um, I'm old. Culture is shaped by a variety of factors. History, language, religion, environment. Okay, I get it. I get it, okay. Uh, it, it, it gives you the, the cute 
you know, little uh, sanitized version of what my question has to be answered like. So you, you read it. And I'm the last one, the last question I'm going to throw at it. And then that's it because I'm done. Got no time. I ain't got no time for this. All right. So <clears throat> my last question before I turn this off and just, you know, sleep finally because I, I need that. <laughs> Anyways, um, don't all of these shared values that you talk about, ChatGPT or any other pretentious intellectual I meet in these type of spaces, they all sound the same in Silicon Valley, really. They, they all really sound the same. Anyways, all these shared values, don't they root back to the idea that a group or tribe and then eventually um, a society, right? Uh, they all want at the most foundational level to thrive and ensure their own survival, right? Uh, for example, the reason that the tribe now collectively agrees on the enjoyment of rain sounds hitting their shelters is really because in that environment, let's say UK, <laughs> rains a lot, right? Uh, being safe from the energetically draining consequences of rain is conducive to better survival and perhaps a competitive advantage against other tribes. For example, right? Uh, I'm going pretty broad in this one, but still, in a way, uh, in this case scenario, meteorology, so the weather, right? Uh, it provides the basis for what will eventually be incorporated into the local culture over time, right? Uh, that co that culture, which is being molded, you know, over hundreds, thousands of years, uh, to the point that future generations won't even ask why they react to such sounds in the way they do, right? In the first place. Uh, because these become unquestionable facets of their legacy, of their society. So, I'd like to conclude. In conclusion, would a tribe or a group that is genetically homogenous, like, I don't know, Poland, but even that is not 100%, but still, they would not have the same reaction to the sound of rain hitting a shelter, right? As opposed to another one, right? Uh, initial shock factor aside, of course, because if you put them in a desert and they never see the rain, they're going to be shocked, but that's... Yeah, that's another... I'm just rambling at this point. What the fuck? All right, let's let's uh, let's end this pain. Both for me and for the poor old Chad GPT, because these are provocative questions. Not even provocative. They're just boring, nerdy questions from a, from a nerd. Uh, I might not sound like them, but God... Who reads these things? I was obsessed with Darwin and with evolutionary theory because it's it makes sense of the world. It's almost a religion, but whatever. What do I know, right? Who am I? A nobody. So it is certainly possible, right? It's ChatGPT talking. That shared values and behaviors within our oh God. Okay, I cannot read this. I cannot read this. You guys pause the video, read this, and please, please do not, okay? Don't. Subscribe to me, all right? Don't follow me, all right? It's not worth your time, and I really couldn't care less. I'm already making enough money as it is. This is just me being a loser, posting this shit on YouTube, thinking that maybe somebody who's into science and, and evolutionary theory might find this appealing. That's all. That's all I'm doing. I really don't care. Bye.